Independent National Electoral Commission resumes collation of results in River State. High Court of the Federal Capital Territory nullifies nomination of Senator Ademola Deleke, PDP governorship candidate in September 2018 election. In international news, Brexit news UK to seek further delay for divorce date from EU. And in sports, Nigerian sisters make waves and squash. This is ANN News. I am Olajumoke Olatunji. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has resumed collision of results in the River State governorship election. And so far, results from 10 local government areas have been released. National Commissioners supervising Bayelsa, Edo, and River State, May Agbamuchembo, announced resumption of governorship results collision and assured party agents and other stakeholders of a fair credible and peaceful coalition process. Port Harcourt's local government area, Equere, Andoni, Oyibo, Eleme, Okwobonkon, Boni, Omuma, Okrika, Kuku, Toria, the local government areas released so far. To court matters, the High Court of the Federal Capital Territory has nullified the candidacy of Senator Ademola Deleke as the flag bearer for the People's Democratic Party in last year's governorship election in Oshun State. The court said that Dedeke failed to prove in court that he graduated from a secondary school as required by Section 177 of the Nigerian Constitution. Dedeke had contested the election against other candidates, including that of the All Progressives Congress, Adegboega Oyetola. The Independent National Electoral Commission had declared Oyetola winner after a rerun election was conducted in parts of the state in September. But last month, the state election tribunal nullified Oyetola's victory and upheld Adelike as the winner. APC candidate Boega Oyetola is challenging the decision at the Court of Appeal. The Senate has promised to pass the 2019 budget by mid-April, just as President Muhammad Buhari was declining assets to the National Housing Fund Bill and seven others recently passed by the National Assembly. Senate President Bukola Saraki made the announcement during Tuesday's plenary. Saraki urged the Senate subcommittees and appropriations to submit their reports by Friday. He also required submission by the appropriations committee within a week. Plenary has been adjourned till Tuesday, so committees involved in the budget defense can complete their assignments. Between the 9th and the 11th, the appropriations must lay their, their report, and we look to passing uh, by, the, by the 16th on, uh, of, of, of April. A Lagos State Commissioner of Police, Zubero Mwazo, has visited the family of Kolade Johnson, who was shot dead by the anti cultism squad. Mwazo was accompanied by Deputy Commissioner of Police, Sayuba Elkana, who is in charge of the Finance and Administration Department. Other senior police officers from the command also went along. President Muhammadu Buhari has sympathized with the family of the deceased and assured the general public that a suspect apprehended on Tuesday will be tried in court. A stray bullet hit and killed Kaladi Johnson during a raid by the anti cultism unit of the command at Onikwe Tessi, Lagos of Belkota Road, on Sunday. He was watching football with his friends when the raid took place. Many cities and villages in Nigeria are known for various culture and trade specialties, and while could spend months and not exhaust the varieties of available trade innovations, so it is with Nagarutu village in Jos Plateau State. Reporter Samson Omale is there. Naragota village is a historical town in Jos that attracts tourists because of its leather and craft. It was a kind of a family business, but now, right, for long it has not been really a family business. So many people come to learn from uh, outside, not even just Nigeria, some from Cameroon, Niger. As far as um, Burkina Faso, people came to learn. So I think um, they've came, learned and left, which I'm sure they are doing perfect now with their businesses and their families too as well. 
The Naraguta village here in Jos, famous for its leather works, has a total population of over 20,000 people. And I'm told that in each household there are at least one thana. The manual production process used across small industry in the village makes the leather products unique and competitive. We make shoes, bags, uh, horse saddle, those were Asian things, this traditional dance attires and the rest. And now it has developed to body parts. We make body prosthetics uh, that are even competing with the foreign ones. There are some of my customers which I did, not, I did not see them by face. But at times they are sending pictures in us of even pouring oneself. They used to send it for us. We will do it much better than the one that they send it for us. Nigeria currently boasts of some of the oldest tanneries on the African continent. But these tanneries are in their need of modern production facilities. We don't have uh, modern machineries, right? in order to boost our production. That's from the tannery right to the finished product. In fact, we need machineries, modern machineries that can aid us in doing that. And you know, with machineries, within a very short time, you'll be able to produce as much as possible. But leather entrepreneurs say with proper government policies and interventions, Nigeria can make leather its second highest foreign exchange earner. <laughs> Coming up, African stories. Algerian president steps down amid protest after two decades in power. And international news, Theresa May says UK to seek further delay for Brexit. You are watching ANN. <sighs> this used to be me. But that was before I got the perfect bag. It's handy and easy to use. All I need in one compact space, just like my MTN Extra Value Plan. I used to get one plan for my calls and then try to remember which data plan worked for me. Roaming was a totally different ball game. Not anymore. I've got the MTN Extra Value All-in-One Plan. If you're a data buff like me, you get extra data with some talk time. And if you like to make calls, you get extra talk time with some data. And when I'm abroad, I automatically browse, chat, and call right on the same plan. MTN Extra Value was made just for me. More of data or calls, whichever one you prefer. MTN Extra Value is made just for you. Welcome back. This is ANN News and African Stories. Algerian President Abdelaziz Bouteflika has announced his immediate resignation on Tuesday, weeks before his presidential term expires. 82-year-old Bouteflika made the move in light of military pressure and six weeks of massive protest against his rule. He had announced in February he would seek a fifth term after more than 20 years in power. Algerians are rejoicing, waving national flags and singing to celebrate the announcement. Many more, uh, African motorists are familiar with bad roads to spell danger to users. Some roads frustrate motorists and elongate by hours trips that should ordinarily be short. Some commercial bus drivers in Ghana are calling on the government to repair the country's roads network to ensure safety of motorists and passengers. Reporting Abu Ahmed Rafai is in Accra. Francis Amo drives eight hours from Accra to the Bonafo region three times a week. He says it's always a struggle to drive passengers to their destination safely. We come across a lot of potholes and huge speed ramps on the road when driving. These are the major causes of accidents. Amo says speed ramps already fixed on roads are poorly constructed. In 2018, over 2,300 people were killed in road accidents many of them involving commercial vehicles. The government says it's working to ensure speed limit devices are installed in all commercial vehicles this year to reduce fatalities. Six people die in road accidents in Ghana every day. That's according to motor transport officials 
who say many of these accidents are linked to speeding and bad roads. And while the government is planning to enforce speed limits, drivers here say they want the roads fixed first. We need to look at it holistically, that if that thing has been introduced, what, what education are they going through? You've given me a speed limit, but along the line, there are some hindrances that reduce my speed limit to the number of speed that you have given to me. Something like maybe there's a portal on the way, the road now is not good. Some public safety experts agree vehicles must have speed limit devices installed, but say that is not enough to reduce road accidents. Considering the urgency, the situation that we find ourselves in today, if I were a policy maker, I'm just going to take off the ground and start implementing continuous driver education, make it a strict requirement for renewal of both operator license and driving license. But Francis Amo worries even that won't be enough. He believes fatalities will continue until Ghana's road network is improved. Egypt says it is shipping 19 military armored vehicles to Burundi and military experts in Cairo have praised the move as a new chapter in the country's industrial capabilities. Late last year, Cairo invited African military officials to attend its first defense exhibition which was designed to market Egyptian military products to African and Arab countries. Reporter Abdul El Maruki has the details. Egypt is entering a new chapter of military production. The Arab Organization for Industrialization announced an arms exportation deal with Burundi. 19 FAT 300 armored vehicles will be produced in the first African deal announced this year. For long, African countries have been importing from Egypt light weapons like rifles, machine guns, mortar shells and other projectiles. The significance of this agreement with Burundi is that it moves Egypt to heavy military machinery exportation, which Egypt has been giving a lot of focus in the field of military production. Based on the designs of the German armored vehicle TH390, Egypt developed FAHD. With its multi-purpose design, FAHD 300 can be used to transport soldiers equipped with heavy machine guns or rocket launchers. Egypt benefited a lot from the experiences of foreign countries like China, South Korea and Pakistan. We have military cooperation with them and their joint military production programs. In France, for example, we've produced high-tech heavy machinery like the Gazelle helicopter and the Gowin frigates. Egypt's first defense expo, edX, has opened opportunities for exportation. Beside the economical added value to the country, Egypt aims to enhance its military production capabilities and become a hub for military production and trade in Africa. United States President Donald Trump has extended for another year the existing five-year national emergency on South Sudan. He says this is necessary because of continuous threats being posed to the United States by the East African country. U.S. former President Barack Obama first declared the emergency just four months after the country descended into civil war in 2014. The U.S. national emergency has remained in place since then. Trump administration says the situation in South Sudan has been marked by activities that threaten the peace, security or stability of South Sudan and the surrounding region. When we return, international news. Theresa May says UK to seek further delay for Brexit. And later, sport. Nigerian sisters make waves and squash. More details when we return. You are watching ANN. Looking for some Disney magic but don't know where to find it? We've got a magical solution just for you. Simply go to DisneyNigeria.mobi and get an exciting selection of games, short videos, wallpapers, shareables and more. Explore a whole new world of Disney on your mobile, tablet or PC. For just 200 Naira monthly, you get to enjoy the fun to infinity and beyond. SMS Disney to 11006 to begin. Terms and conditions apply. This service is only available to MTN customers. 
Welcome back. This is ZNN News. Now to international stories. Britain's departure date from the European Union is now nine days away. EU chief negotiator Michel Barnier has said on Tuesday, Britain's exit from the Union without a deal was becoming day after day more likely. Prime Minister Theresa May says she would seek a further extension of the departure date of April the 12th. But Barnier says in Brussels on Tuesday, if the UK still wants to leave the EU in an orderly manner, Theresa May's deal is and will be the only one. Exit without a deal would affect trade and travel overnight with new checks and borders and new regulations and dealings between Britain and the 27 remaining EU nations. While the exact ramifications of an unprecedented EU withdrawal remain unclear, many, including the UK government's own central bank, has warned that the impact on the British economy could be severe. A long list of global corporations have already announced plans to relocate their European headquarters from London to other cities in the EU because of Brexit, and others have already shifted some personal and put contingents in their plans in action to move more out of Britain. As corporations plan to relocate out of the UK to other EU countries, Britain is encouraging EU nationals living in the country to stay after Brexit. But many of those EU nationals would have other policies with which to contend with after Brexit. For example, in Work and Health Policies, reporter Hannan Hoister has that story. Michele, a store supervisor at this Italian deli in London, is one of the over 1.2 million Europeans living in the capital. I came here in uh, 2014, so it's five years uh, last January, and uh, obviously this is my new home. I'm happy here, I have a family, a little child expecting the second one. So, yeah, we, we would like to stay as long as possible. With people like McKelly in mind, the UK government is launching a multi-million dollar media campaign to encourage EU nationals to secure their post-Brexit status and register for permanent settlement. The majority of McKelly's co-workers must also apply, leaving their boss worried about staffing levels. Obviously, it's going to make it hard. I mean, already for me as a business, I'm struggling finding good stuff. So for many hundreds of thousands of EU citizens, the process is like to be fairly straightforward. But there is concern that many could fall through the cracks, potentially leaving them with no lawful right to remain in the United Kingdom. Campaigners say the consequences of failing to register will be extreme and there is unease about vulnerable citizens. You will become victim, potentially, to the hostile environment of the UK means that you potentially face being removed. It means that you will not be able to work. It means that you will not be able to access certain healthcare services. It means potentially you will not be able to open a bank account or rent or drive a car. Some EU nationals who came together after the Brexit vote to campaign for their rights are worried and angry. It's irresponsible for any country to change the status of people that already live here. This is our home. We live here. We build our families. We had babies here. We, we loved here. And suddenly we, we told, are you not like us? However, other EU citizens are embracing the new settlement scheme. Would you like to try one for Aline? One of them is Véronique Marvien, who has lived in the UK for 20 years and runs a profitable business in European treats. I'm aware of all the new rules. So just to, to apply, to, to be uh, uh, able to stay uh, here and to carry on of my business and after uh, to apply for the British citizenship. Turkey's main opposition candidate in Istanbul has urged the High Election Board on Wednesday to confirm him as the elected mayor after it ruled in favor of the partial recount of votes in eight of the city's 39 districts. Initial results from Sunday's mayor election showed the opposition Republican People's Party had narrowly won control of Turkey's two biggest cities, Istanbul and Ankara, in a short upset for President Tay Padrohan, ruling AK party. If those results are confirmed in the coming days, the CHP will gain control of municipal budgets with an estimated total value of almost $6 billion for 2019 in Istanbul. Turkey's commercial hub and the capital, Erdogan, who campaigned, campaigned hard for the AKP ahead of the vote, would likely lose some oversight for local contracts in the two biggest cities, possibly complicating his efforts to drag the Turkish economy out of recession. 
still ahead, sports. Nigerian sisters make waves and scores. Stay with us. You are watching ANN. Welcome back. This is ANN News. Finding it tonight in sport. Two sisters, one game. That is the story of Nigeria's Williams sisters who have taken the sport of squash by storm in the country and around the world. The story of the rise to a dominant position in the sport is quite intriguing, as told by Dej Badmas. They add to the game of squash in Nigeria what the famous Williams sisters are to tennis in the United States of America and across the world. They train together almost every day, learn from each other, and most times even compete in the same tournament. The elder of the two, 25-year-old Yemisi, is Nigeria's number one female squash player. She started playing the game as a teen in 2004 before joining the elite squash team of Lagos in 2014. And she currently has several domestic and continental medals to her name. My mother was like, no, you're a lady, you have to do something else. You don't have to be into sports. But um, my dad, when he was young, he used to be a footballer. So I think his parents also discouraged him. So it was like, ah, thank God, oh, I found a new talent in my house. So I need to, you know, to encourage her. Younger sister Busayo actually started out from tennis before making the switch to squash at the age of 11 in 2009. From then on, and under the guidance of her elder sister, she's been making rapid progress. My sister already threw the way for me. So I, I know she, she um, encountered a lot of things for my parents, but by the time I started playing squash, um, my parents were no more saying anything again. They were like, okay, let's follow her. Both sisters have squared up against each other in a number of tournaments, but at every occasion, it's the elder Yemisi who has come out victorious. Once you are inside the squash court, there's no sister, no blood, no relation. All what you think about is, this is my opponent, this is my enemy. How am I going to win him or her? But Busayo is seriously closing the gap between herself and Yemisi. Both of them met in the final of a tournament in Zimbabwe last year, where Yemisi only managed to outpoint her younger sister. Busayo thinks 2019 could be the year when she topples her elder sister as the top squash player in the country. Well, right now, I think this is the best time for me to take over. So this year, like, I'm, I'm trying, like, I'm, I've make up my mind, like, this year I'm going to at least do something. Squash is not such a popular sport in football crazy Nigeria, but the sisters are trying in their own small measure to promote the game and create more awareness for it. As for their sibling rivalry, it's something that would eventually be settled someday in the squash court. So passionate. And that is the end of news this evening. Thank you for joining us. For details on this and other stories, visit the website inanafrica.net. Conversation continues on our social media platforms, Twitter, Instagram and Facebook at Africa TV. I am Olajuwoke Olatunji. Have a pleasant evening.